All right, let's talk about quantizing in the newer version of Pro Tools. All right, so I'm testing out a new screen capture system. So let me know what you think, I guess. Hopefully this works. But what I wanted to cover today is kind of a shorty topic, and that is the new way that you can work with the quantizing system in Pro Tools. So which version of Pro Tools am I in here? Let's see. I am in 2022.10.0. I think that's the most recent. As of shooting this, I think that's the most recent. I just got a new computer, which I'll talk about after all this, maybe as like a blooper dash outro chat type of thing. But in previous versions of Pro Tools, if you wanted to quantize, which is basically when we can snap things to the beat or the groove, um, snap things to the grid, basically, or to a groove. But previously, what you had to do in Pro Tools, if you wanted to quantize, is you had to go to event, and then you had to go to event operations, and then choose your option, right? So quantize, you could do input quantize, we have a bunch of different options here. But there's actually a newer way of doing things that's a little faster. Um, and I noticed it recently when I installed this version of Pro Tools on this machine because it defaulted to displaying. But if you look at this top section of Pro Tools, this is, I believe it's called your edit window toolbar. So you have a bunch of different tools, you have your edit modes, you have your time stuff, you have you know a whole bunch of different things depending on what you're displaying or hiding. And you can click on this drop down to display or hide different things, right? You can make the MIDI controls disappear, you can make the transport window disappear. That one might be good if you wanna open up the transport window separately because you can open it up as its own window, right? So it's kind of however you want to customize things. But you can show and hide different things here. I'm going to bring these back in. But the thing we're going to talk about today are is are the quantize controls. So if we click that to show that, you can see it's just this little rectangle of stuff right here. And so from this little section here, you can access a lot of the stuff that we previously would access through this uh, event operations menu. So you can click the little gear icon and open up that window for event operations where you can choose whether or not you're quantizing, you're input quantizing, you're transposing, stuff like that. We've talked about some of this stuff in my other videos, so I'm not gonna go into a bunch of detail on it. But you can access that window just by clicking on this gear icon, and you can also click this quantize button to quantize a selection. So I'll show you that in a second. You also notice that we have grid values here, and this is independent of this grid value. So I can make this say, for example, it's on an eighth note now, but this one for the quantize functions is on a 16th note. So it is independent of our other grid. So our quantize grid and our regular grid are seem to be two, two separate things here, at least in, as far as using it, it, they seem to be two separate things. And then we also have our strength and our swing values displaying. So we can really quickly click and change those here. And you'll notice as I click on the swing and change it, it's moving it in this window. So these two are linked, the window and what's displaying here. And similarly, if I turn off swing here, it brings it back to 0% right there. So it's very similar to how it used to work, if you're familiar with that. It's just a slightly easier user interface, in my opinion, at least. So let me show you in action just a little bit. I have this beat that I'm working on that I've just started really recently. It's just kind of a rough draft. I've just kind of added a random uh, low end instrument to it. I added a little 808 here. So if I hit play on my keyboard, that's what I have going on. So I'm just gonna bring my keyboard out so I can see what I'm hitting a little bit. Um, you'll notice my beat is in F major, so that's kind of what I'm going to be playing in. And I'll play it for a second so you can kind of hear it. So that's kind of the start. It builds into other stuff, but um, that's the gist. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to record a little something, you know, like whatever. And I'm going to be off the beat. It's just, it's going to happen. I'm not going to try too hard. It's definitely going to be a little off the beat. And then we can use the quantize function really quickly using this, this, uh, this new display that they have. So I will just do that. So I'm going to hit three to record. I already have my instrument record enabled. This is the only thing that is being recorded right now. And um, I'm just going to go for it. All right, so I just did that really quick little bit. But if we look at it, I'm gonna switch into the notes for you so it's like a little more obvious, a little more easy to see here. 
you'll see I'm a little off from the grid here. So whenever I hit the note, I was slightly off and that's pretty normal, um, especially for someone that's not really a performer, right? So I'm a little off from the grid, but what we can do is we can highlight a chunk of time. So I can just highlight all those notes. And if I zoom in so you can really see the difference here, I kind of stretch this out as far as possible too. What you can see is if I hit this quantize button here, it jumps them all to the grid. So if I do command Z, you'll see these move again. So see how they're slightly off the grid because a human, me, a very imperfect human played the notes, but I can hit quantize and it will push it to the grid. Now, if I undo that and then I change the strength to something very low, I can hit quantize and it won't move them as close to the grid. So you that's really what strength does. It's like how far, how extreme it's going. 100% is like all the way to the grid. 0% is like no movement. I believe it's no movement. Um, it's basically no movement. And then anything in between is, is something between. So let me do undo here. So that's kind of what that does. You know, we have a bunch of different other functions and features within this window. For example, you can do input quantize and it will quantize it as you play it, as you put it in. Um, you can quantize after the fact, like I just showed you. I have a whole video that's about transposition. I'll put a card for that up on the screen. Anyway, so that's basically it. This whole part is new-ish. It's one of the more recent things in Pro Tools. I know it didn't used to be a thing. And again, you can activate that by clicking on this little drop down here and choosing quantize controls so that you can see those controls. It's just a little bit easier and more user friendly than going to event and then event operations and then finding what you wanna do. So that's about all I have to say about this new feature with the quantize controls right now. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash noise. And we have a Discord server we're hanging out on. We're doing a book club that's all audio engineering and music production stuff on there. That's been a lot of fun. There's some additional content to be had there for my Patreon patrons in addition to early release videos. So check that out if you feel so inclined. It does support my channel. Thank you so much to my Patreon patrons. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. Okay, so I got a new computer recently. So the story is, this is what happened. I had a 2019 MacBook Pro, and I really love that computer. I'm keeping it as a secondary device and for if, if I'm ever traveling and I want to use a laptop. But basically, I was frying the computer. So I, you know, I work constantly and my computer's running sometimes very complex sessions, sometimes not so complex, but a lot of times they're fairly complex. And then um, I have it like rendering video at night, for example, uh, a lot of times for things like these YouTube videos. So the computer is working pretty hard, pretty constantly all day, most days. You know, I don't take days off. Um, I know I should. I have been trying to take Tuesdays off for a while, but I keep failing and doing like half days on Tuesdays. But anyway, point is the computer has been running pretty hard and I had to have it fixed like six months ago. And I think it's because I was running it so hard it couldn't keep up and it was the fan was going constantly and I think I was basically melting the computer. So what happened recently is it started to exhibit some of the same symptoms that it had before it had to be repaired. And I was like, I cannot be without a computer for, you know, another week or two again. And I can't keep paying to repair this computer if I'm just going to break it again. So I finally uh, bit the bullet. Is that the phrase? Bit the bullet. <laughs> I finally... Um, you know, went ahead and got a Mac Studio computer. So I have a Mac Studio M1 Ultra. Um, I can post the specs somewhere. If anyone's curious, just let me know. I can comment and post the specs. But um, so I got this computer. And when I ordered the computer, it said that it came with Monterey, which is compatible with Pro Tools and everything, right? So I was like, good. Place the order directly from Apple. And when the computer arrived, it had Ventura on it. And um, after this whole really long ordeal on the phone with Apple, um, the beginning of which was not very good because the person that I was talking to told me to go straight into the system settings and hit erase all data before they even had me create a backup boot disk. And I was like, I don't I don't have a ton of experience doing this, but from my experience, you usually want to make a backup boot drive of some sort before you wipe and then replace an OS. And um, then they were like, oh, yeah, maybe don't do that. And then eventually I got passed up to the manager and they had to look a bunch of stuff up. And essentially what they told me is 
with the with at least with the newer computers, if they ship with Ventura on them, you cannot they physically can't help you install a previous OS. So as new OSs come out, if I install them, I can go back to Ventura is my understanding, but I or this version of Ventura, but I can't go past that. So I that was very upsetting, but I went ahead and was like, all right, well, I'll install my stuff and see how it goes and see what happens and um, then decide whether or not to return the computer based on whether or not it works. And I'm happy to report that I've, I've installed pretty much everything at this point and that I use on a regular basis, at least. And I haven't had any significant issues with the computer the the biggest thing that i've noticed is like when i'm in pro tools if i'm like hovering for example see how my mouse isn't displaying the selector tool it'll kind of like go back and forth between the cursor and the whatever the tool is that you want to use so you kind of have to be a little more aware of like oh if i click here i'm going to have the selector even though it's not showing me the selector so there it's behaving like the selector and then when i have it for the grabber right it doesn't show me that but i know that that's what's there so you kind of have to know a little bit more. Um, but that is such a minor thing. Like functionally, it's working fine. So I got lucky. I'm using a Universal Audio Apollo 8. Um, it's the, what is it, UAD2 Duo. It's kind of old, but it's it's working fine. Um, I know Universal Audio, like all their installers and stuff, they're all compatible with the, with the M1 and with uh, Ventura. And um, most of my plugins are either compatible or they're working fine despite not having announced compatibility yet. So that's been good. Um, I had no trouble with, let's see, what do I have here? Like the baby audio stuff worked fine. I'm really happy about that. The Valhalla stuff's working fine. I'm really happy about that as well. I've got all the Slate stuff going. That's been fine. Um, Fab filter has been fine. Hofa has been fine. But I, I I don't use a ton of the Hofa ones. I mostly just use the meter. Um, What else? I got Serum going. That one gave me a little bit of a headache, but I got that one going. Uh, same thing with the STL Tones one. I didn't realize they have two installers and like one is for the M1. And that's what I initially kind of glanced at and installed. But I needed to install. They have another one that's for like Rosetta. So if I was working in another DAW that was native to the M1, I would be fine with the installer I initially used. But since Pro Tools is still working off Rosetta, I had to install that special installer from STL Tones. But other than that, it's been it's been pretty easy. It's been pretty good. Plugin Alliance ones are working well. Um, I don't know. All the ones that I use regularly are fine. So yeah, I've been really happy with that. And it's been really nice to come in here when the computer has a big session open or it's like running video or whatever and not hear like a jet engine roar with the fan. So that's been really cool. Um, yeah, I've been pretty happy. I also heard a little birdie told me that Pro Tools should be announcing compatibility soon. So we'll see.